Come on in. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you're here on campus or you're watching online. Let's worship together. Jesus has opened the way so we can enter into the presence of God, so we can enter into his throne room and come before him and worship him. So let's do that together as one body of believers this morning. Let's give him glory. Amen.
Okay, and how about our first and second time guests? We call you our VIPs for a reason. Glad you're here. Yeah, and don't forget our online viewers, wherever you're watching from, maybe a Starbucks, maybe an in-law's house, or maybe your own couch. We're glad you're tuning in. So this last week was Thanksgiving. Hopefully you had a great time. Hopefully maybe you're still a little full like me. Following Thanksgiving, Black Friday, I talked to somebody this morning who went to nine different stores wow. on Black Friday. One is more than enough for me. Maybe online, that's about it. But how about you? You know, Eddie, I, I was getting ready for Black Friday. I was prepping to get the best outfits for 2021 for when I'm up here hosting so you guys can see me looking all good. But, you know, I realized I checked the bank account and I realized I spent all of my life savings on the new New Walk merch. But and look at that. I mean, look, are you wearing it too? Yeah, look at Is there something? Very nice. Look at there's is there something on your back? A, Wait, is there? Is there oh, oh, very oh nice. Oh my goodness. You're looking good. Oh my goodness. Wow. All right. Well, on a serious note, <laughs> On a serious note, there is new New Walk merch. We have some new designs. So for yourself, for your loved ones, Christmas is right around the corner. There will be a little pop-up shop right outside once we dismiss a little later on. But for now, Eddie, what we got? We got to continue in a spirit of worship. Let's go back to our Heavenly Father. Would you guys pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for this church, for letting us gather in this room this morning together as brothers and sisters. Lord, I pray that you would fill this place with your presence that you would fill our hearts with your presence. You know what each person needs to hear this morning. So I pray that you would speak. Speak through the worship. Speak through Pastor Gary's message, every part of this. And we're looking forward to what you have, Father. We love you so much. I pray this all in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Let's continue Let's worshiping. Hallelujah, louder than 
church, we sing just our voices. Let's lift that up. They make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God. Yes, it is. Mark Scheman. And I'm Lisa. And uh, we've been coming to New Walk for about five years. Yep. And uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about giving today. Um, giving is important to us. It's uh, integral in our, in our worship. Um, we view giving as an act of worship. Absolutely. You know, God says in, in Matthew 6, 21, that where our treasure is, there, oh, where, where our treasure is, that's where our heart is. Can I start that over? So Matthew 6, 21 states that where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. So to, for us to have a joyful spirit in giving is, is what God wants of us. He, do, he does not want us to give out of compulsion. And that has been an area that we've had to grow in. You know, we initially started out with giving almost like it was paying a bill, you know, something that we had to do. And as we have seen God be faithful month after month and week after week, it has become something that we anticipate and are joyful about. serve together on the worship team uh, on weekends and um, I know that God's gifts are used for just the production of everything that we do during a weekend service and being able to see it from that angle um, you know everything from production to to the lights and setting the atmosphere to have an impactful worship experience to get people ready to hear the message and to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ is critical. So on a personal level, we have seen God show up. There have been times when, okay, paycheck comes in, it's time to send our tithe to church. You know, we had a tuition bill that was due and it was one of those, there's just not enough money in the account and what are we gonna do? And so we chose faithfulness in that circumstance. And it's amazing that God was able to work us through that. Um, he just, he showed up, the resources were available and we were able to do what we needed to do. And any time that we've had that choice where it's been it's been between bills and tithing, choosing tithing always wins. It always wins and God has shown up. And we talk about those events a lot and they're so impactful in the community and giving people the opportunity to come to church when they maybe wouldn't have otherwise done so and to hear the gospel. But just what is done every day and every weekend at New Walk, I mean, I know that that takes our money and our giving and our tithe for that to happen and for us to reach the community on that weekly and daily basis at New Walk, um, that's where the joy comes from. Um, yeah, and we're just a small part. We're like the, the pinky toenail on the giant of, of giving in, in our church, but our small gift contributes to the bigger picture and so we can have these really neat events, you know, that helicopter egg drop, the winter wonderland at Christmas time that draws people into church who normally wouldn't want to be here. Anybody that's on the fence about whether to give to 
to trust in God and to do it and to try it for 90 days and, and to see what blessings um, that you can realize from that. Thank you for giving it New Walk. Thank you so much for giving it New Walk. Hey, all right. Love that video from Mark and Lisa. Thank you so much for being here this morning. We got a group of people watching online. We got another group of people here in the live setting. Those of us in the live setting, let's welcome the people that are watching online. Thank you for joining us. Right now, we are one church with two different platforms, and we're glad you're connected either way. And uh, we're going to really continue, we're going to close out our series this morning that we've been in, just a three-week series called Out of Order. We'll kick off something new next week. But before I get into uh, all of what we're starting next week, I want to tell you about something that uh, is is something people have asked me about since, you know, for the last couple of weeks. Hey, Pastor Gary, what are we doing for Christmas at New Walk? And around here, we have pretty high expectations about what we would do for Christmas at New Walk because, you know, we go all out. But this year has absolutely presented challenges to us in multiple ways. You could probably imagine what they are uh, for us to be able to do Christmas at New Walk the way that we have done it in the past with the snow and the events outside. And so that being a challenge for us, uh, you know, I've had to make a decision to say what's the smartest thing to do with our resources right now. And the smartest thing is to uh, not drop the money into that this year. And so we are going to have Christmas at New Walk, but it is going to be slightly scaled down. But let me tell you what it's going to include. And I think that you're craving this no matter what is it's going to include something that is very traditional. It's going to include uh, just beautiful singing and worship, Christmas songs, and and a Christmas message. And uh, that is going to be, I think, a great experience to still be a part of, to invite friends, to invite family to be a part of. uh, Because of of things related to COVID, meeting out, uh, doing the events outside is, is, is very costly. And what we determined after Trunk or Treat was that Hey, you know what? Uh, we we use trunk or treat as almost a, a, a sampling for us. If we did a massive event here at our church, how many people would come? And it was 47 percent of our pre-COVID numbers from the year before. And so what that told us is that when we do a massive event, less than half the people that would normally come would come. And again, that that's driving uh, decisions. As your pastor of this church, I have to be a steward of our resources and say, is this the best bang? for our buck. I get it. Every soul saved matters to God. And we're going to see people come to know Jesus on Christmas weekend. There's no question about it. But it's just going to be a little bit different. Uh, you know, there's, there's things too, like, you know, how does it look in our community to attract thousands and thousands and thousands of people here for an event right now? It's just probably not the best thing on the appearance side of things. So making this decision, what we will have is six services, two on a Saturday night, uh, two on a Sunday morning, Two on a Sunday night, that's just in a couple of weeks, from a few weeks from now, we're going to have this uh, uh, gathering here for Christmas at New Walk, and uh, you would do us a huge favor by kind of spreading out over those six services. In other words, Sunday morning, it's probably going to be much more crowded at our two Sunday morning services than maybe it would be on our two Sunday night or our Saturday night services. And so I'll challenge you to maybe, maybe do Saturday night that weekend or do Sunday night Make it sort of a night experience for you and your family. Uh, What we don't want is, say, all of you here at this service, and then let's add 300 more. That would be a pretty crowded room, and during this kind of thing that we're in right now, we don't really want that kind of environment. So you spreading out and, and picking one of those different times would be good for our work. If it's the only time you can come, that's fine as well. I understand that totally, but we uh, want to create as much of a spread out as we possibly can as we go through this. Something else that I mentioned just a second ago, we're starting a new series next week, and it is going to run all the way through Christmas at New Walk. Our near se- new series is called Don't Miss Christmas, and I'll kick that off next week, and I just felt like that's what we needed to call this thing because I feel like we're craving those traditions. Like right now, we're tired of having things kicked out from underneath us. We're tired of, of being told we have to miss out on this and miss out on that. And so I said, you know what, let's make sure we don't miss Christmas, and I'm going to do that series. Hope you'll come next week. Again, bring people with you as we kick 
that off. Another thing that's going on at our church is actually this Thursday for our volunteers, and I want to share this with you because some of you may not have been aware of it, and you are a current volunteer. We're having a volunteer appreciation night uh, here at our church on Thursday night. Again, just for the people that are currently serving or serving, you're a part of our church. We want to invite you to be a part of that, and I'm sharing with it publicly because I know some of you, you may be like, I didn't even know about that. You missed our emails. You missed our communication, or maybe we missed you somehow, and that happens sometimes, so don't be afraid to say, hey, you missed me. I think I should be a part of that. Write us. Let us know right away uh, that we've maybe missed that communication to you because we want you, as if you're a servant here at the church or serving in any capacity, we would love for you to be a part of that experience on the third this coming Thursday. The guys on stage mentioned our new merch store. I hope you'll go check that out. I'm wearing one of the shirts as well. And uh, the truth is, is that because I'm wearing this shirt, it will be the most sought-after shirt that's out there. I'm just telling you right now, it's just the way it's going to be. And uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's sold out at this point, honestly. But uh, there's a lot of good stuff over there. And when you support that, you support uh, you know, our ministry work here at the church. That's truthfully what it is. I even brought out something else. Man, a, a, bl- a New Walk blankie. Like, who wouldn't want... A new walk blankie, all right? We've even got those uh, going on over there at the store as well. When we've gone through this series, we've been primarily talking about getting things related to our finances in order. And I know that there's always people in the room who will say, man, I don't like hearing the church talk about money, and I don't want them to talk about money. And again, next week we're, we're moving on, but we do talk about money once every 12 months or 16 months. If you don't like me talking about money, it's probably because your money's in a bad situation. And so if you don't want to hear about it, it's okay. I, I understand, you know, and, and that makes sense. A lot of times we don't like to hear about the things that we're struggling with. But if you are uh, not wanting to hear about it, you can feel free to get up and leave. We'll all stare at you. You know, so that's fine. You know, we'll all look at you as you leave because we'll know you got a problem with money. But anyways, other than that, uh, I hope you'll listen because I think the information that I'm going to give you is going to be helpful. Hey, how do, why is it we decide every year or 16 months to have some talks about money? Because you told us to talk about it. We get information off of your Connect cards. When you share with us prayer requests and needs, you're telling us what's going on in your life. And that's how we craft the things that we're going to talk about here on the weekends based on some of the things you're communicating to us. And many times, well over 10, sometimes 20% of the cards we might get could say it's a financial need. We're hurting. We're praying for a job. We're praying for a raise. We've got some kind of need. And so you're telling us that money is an issue. And so we, we're going to communicate some things to you because of that. Another reason is because here's what we know. Marriages that are struggling or marriages that end in divorce, 50-something percent of those struggle, struggling marriages or divorces identify finances as one of the key issues that led to struggles. We're also going to talk about it because it's the most talk about, talked about topic in the entire Bible. So let's deal with this together. I mean, if you were to pick one particular topic, there's more talk about money, scriptures, texts, than any, any other topic. So we're going to pay attention to this, and we're going to go through this together. And, and this has been an issue for Sean and I over the years. It, it's something I can teach you out of some of the mistakes that we've made as well. I remember many years ago, we made a huge mistake with our finances. Uh, we were getting one of those big income tax return checks. Remember those uh, that we would get? Some of you still get those. I, I've gotten a big one before, and we get those, you know, we fill out our paperwork. And then, uh, you know, many years ago, you might have to wait eight or ten weeks to get it. Now it's electronic. You get it in maybe a couple of weeks or ten days. And, and here's the thing. When that money's coming, when you're getting a check back, you know what you're getting. You know for maybe a couple of weeks this income that's coming in your way. So Sean and I, we had a large thing coming our way. We were really excited about that. At the same time, we had a lot of problems in our home when it came to things that needed repaired, all right? We had a hot water heater that was broken, needed replaced. We had a, a dishwasher that needed replaced. We had some other things that were breaking around the house. And so it would have been smart for us, right, to get that money plan, get it set aside, to get those things fixed when we got that tax check coming in. But we didn't put a plan together, and instead, we got that income and we went shopping. 
you know what I'm talking about. Like, we went shopping, you know, and I went into Dick's Sporting Goods, and then I went over into Best Buy and found some things that I couldn't live without, and she went into Marshall's. <laughs> some ladies can get lost in Marshall's, you know, like buggy fool kind of stuff, and she found a purse. She had 10 already, but she found another purse that she couldn't live without, and she uh, found some shoes because, you know, you got to have those as well, and she found all kinds of other things, and before we knew it, the money was blown. And I'll tell you, it was blown because we didn't put a plan together before we got that income. And today what I'm talking to you about really is just having a plan for our money, knowing where it's going. You know, God gives us the wisdom, His Spirit gives us the wisdom to get all kinds of things in order in our lives. I love what Paul says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse verse 13. Uh, He says this, uh, for God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him and the things that please God always are going to lead you in the right direction in your life. So if if I invite the power of God to do a work inside of me into my relationships and I receive that and start acting on God's wisdom for my life and my relationships, will my relationships be better? Yes, they'll, they'll improve. If I invite God into my marriage and, and listen to what he's saying for my marriage and activate it into my marriage, will my marriage get better? Probably, yes, it will. My, my, yes, my, my kids, handling my kids, if I listen to God, they'll, they'll work, things will improve, things will get better. The same is true when you invite God and his wisdom into your life when it comes to giving, when it comes to saving, when it comes to spending, budgeting, all these things. God will absolutely give you the wisdom if you seek him and then apply it. We're going to look at a guy in the scriptures who really embodies some of the best wisdom for finances. King Solomon, the wisest man to ever live. I mean, this guy is spitting out some wisdom when it comes to money. And you need to pay attention to this stuff. If the wisest man to ever live gave you information about how to get your finances in order, you need to pay attention. When I was growing up, there was that investing company Uh, And they always ran these commercials. Some of you are going to be old enough to remember this commercial. The company was called E.F. Hutton. And they had this famous commercial. In fact, some of you will be able to finish it. I'm going to start it out. Ready? They said this. They said, when E.F. Hutton talks, people what? Listen. That's right. Like their firm's wisdom was supposed to be, you know, so incredible. Their incredible wisdom. Well, listen, when King Solomon talks, you should listen. It is good good information. Let let me give you a little bit of it right here, right out of the gate. Here's what it says in Proverbs 13, verse 16. Wise people think before they act. Well, that's probably true, isn't it? (laughs) Fools don't. They even brag about their foolishness. The fools do. Hey, that's 2020. You ready? Here it is. Here's what that is right now. Ready? Yo, I'm way in debt, and I got even more in debt by getting this car that I could hardly afford. Check it out how awesome it is. I'm bragging about my foolishness. We do this today. Get further and further in the debt, but we like to show everybody, you know, the things that we have. I wrote in your notes, this is from Solomon, five foundations for financial freedom. Let me give you the first one if you want to write this down. I think it's going to be helpful. Here's the first one. Keep good records. Anybody that wants to get their finances in order in a healthy perspective keeps good records. There's a handful of people here watching online here in our live setting. You, you already do this. Like You're paying attention to the details, uh, everything that's coming in, everything that's going out. I'm going to talk more about budgeting. I'm even talking about budgeting right here. This is just the act of getting all the information down on paper so that you can see it very clearly. Here's what Solomon says, Proverbs 27, verse 23. Riches can disappear fast, So watch your business interests closely. Know the state of your flock. All right, back then, uh, many, many people, uh, their primary way, uh, uh, they they were shepherded. Many, they were shepherded. This is the primary way of business is to shepherd, to shepherd flocks. And so they, uh, it makes sense, right, if I, if this is my primary work, I need to make sure that I know my inventory. I need to know what's coming in. I need to know what's going out. I ought to know the state of my flocks. Well, the same is true today. It's applicable for you and I. You need to know the current status of everything going on in your life financially. You've got to be realistic. How am I really doing? Let me get all those numbers together. 
I wrote this down in my notes. Ignorance plus easy credit equals trouble. We just are ignorant sometimes to what's the real current state of the flock, of our flocks, of our resources. I think it's so hard to do this sometimes for many of us because we are afraid of what it's going to show. Right? The old principle in, in, in living financially is called, ten, it's 10, 10, 80. If you've been here at New Walk long enough, you've heard me share it as well. Uh, financial advisors will share this, you know, non-Christian financial advisors will share the principle of 10, 10, 80. What is 10, 10, 80? I'm going to give 10, save 10, live off of 80%. All right, this brings healthy living. All right, but if I was to potentially put all this on paper, it's possible that here's what it's going to show, 0, 0, 105, or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to show that I'm trying to live off of 105% of my income. In other words, I'm in debt. That the math doesn't work. I can't give, I can't save, and I, I have no money. This, when we do this, it's possible, it's going to be very sobering to keep your records, to put your records on paper. Right? If you're in Celebrate Recovery, where we do steps to recovery from struggles in our life, hurts, habits, hang-ups, one of the most difficult moments for somebody going through recovery or going through the steps is when they have to take a really an inventory, an account of kind of where they are, like right now, and some of the things that have happened in the past and where, what got me to where I am. And so many people struggle with that because it's very sobering. It's a very honest look at where I am in my life. And it's hard to do this financially because it may show you a mess, but you can't begin the journey or continue the journey into financial healthiness until you decide to get all the facts. Proverbs 23 and verse 23, get the facts at any price. Here's the second thing I put in your notes. After we start getting a log or a record of, I'm talking about everything coming in, everything going out, every, all your assets, all your liabilities, debt, whatever, get all that on paper. Here's the next thing you've got to decide to do is give 10% back. I love the video of the Shemans because they, they talk about, hey, we don't want to give out of compulsion. You know, we, we want to give because we want to give. And as a Christ follower, you know, of course, it would be natural. You'd say, yes, I want to do this because I believe in the work of my local church. But I know this is also hard. In fact, this is the step that many, many people will continue to struggle with, uh, this and the next one. But this particular issue of giving to the church becomes a struggle for a lot of people because, because they fail to just plan it oftentimes. Sometimes it's just as simple as planning it. Well, I mentioned 10, 10, 80. 10% give, 10% save, live off the other 80% brings financial healthiness. And so what you've got to decide before you even really get a budget together in my mind is that you just want to do this. Again, a healthy financial advisor, even a non-Christian will say, you need to have charitable work. They're going to put that line item in there anyways. We just believe as Christians, the primary first source of that charitable work should be in the work of the local church, which is changing the lives of the people in my community. This principle of giving tenth, a tenth, a tithe, 10% back, that's what we're talking about here. It's littered throughout the scriptures. It's a biblical principle because it goes all the way through the Bible. Here's what it says, though, Solomon says about this in Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. It says this, uh, it says, honor the Lord by giving the first part, not the leftovers, of all your income, and he will fill your barns to overflow, all right? That's what we talked about last week. When we learned this principle of giving, uh, we go from the bag to the basket to the barn, and the barn says, man, I'm just overflowing with blessing. I'm going to set this money aside every time I get an income. I'm just, I'm not even going to look at it. It's just going to be gone, and then I'm going to save 10, and then I'm going to live off of the 80%. Solomon understood this principle that uh, people do understand today. Some, many others don't. Many Christians don't understand this principle. Like, there's a blessing. That's why it's not compulsion for me because there's a blessing that comes in return from my own life, but also watching God move in the lives of other people. I love being a part of that here at our church. Some people say to me, well, Pastor Gary, should I tithe off of my gross or my net? Well, it just to me, the answer is how much do you want to be blessed? So for me, it's the gross. 
I, if you want to make it the net, that's fine. Can you just start it? Let's not argue over that. Let's just put that in right now and say, okay, we're going to do that. Uh, Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God. You know the scripture, we looked at it in week one. Seek first the kingdom of God, all his righteousness. Then all these things will be added unto you. I love this translation. It says, seek God first, look, and then everything is brought into focus. Begin to see more clearly. And when I start giving, when I start giving of that first to God, I begin to see things more clearly in my finances. God opens my eyes to my finances in a way that I can't understand until I start doing this. Proverbs 10, 16 says, the good man's earnings advance the cause. I love what this translation says, advance the cause of righteousness. In other words, when you partner with your church, you're advancing the cause of God's righteousness in the community. Man, I got to be a part of that. It's not compulsion for me. I got to be a part of that because that's a difference making thing that I can be a part of. Uh, here, here's what I, I also found this scripture that Solomon says in, in Proverbs 22, verse 9 A generous man will have God's blessings. I want that. I want to be a part of that. Now, I want to answer some questions about this before I move on to my next point because. You know, this always raises questions, and I've answered some of them actually in the first two weeks, but there's always the question of like, uh, where does the money go when we give to our church? And I answered that one, you know, over the last couple of weeks when I said, uh, all you have to do is open your eyes and look around. And all you have to do is see that we've had, you know, 6,000 people come to know Jesus in 14 years, 2,000 plus people get baptized. Just a couple of weeks ago, 50 something people got baptized here at our church. So. You know, again, I won't belabor the point, but if you were going to a church where nobody was coming to know Jesus, I guess you could be like, where's this money going? But it's happening around here all the time, even through this pandemic. God is reaching people through the work here of this local church. But here's another good question that people ask. Well, Pastor Gary, you know what? Don't you think it would be right for me to make sure I pay all of my debt first, and then I'll circle back around and start giving? And here's my answer to you. Uh, the scriptures tell us that when we do not honor God with our finances by putting our finances first and doing that 10th, God calls this out in a very clear way. He says, you're robbing me. So we robbed him to go into debt, and now our rationale is, let me keep robbing you while I pay off the debt that I acquired while I was robbing you. No. You should pay off your debt, but you should start honoring God first, not last. That's the proper way to do it. You think, you think in your mind it's not possible to do this. I can guarantee you if you get a good financial plan, a good financial money manager, you can pay off the debt, still give, and still save, and still live off the rest. You've just got to decide that you really want this. Here, and Here's another thing people will say during this time. They say, well, I can't give, but I'll give of my time. You should do that. You should give of your time because God calls us to do that. Time, talent, but also treasure. You don't get, a, just because you've screwed up your finances, you don't get a pass on this area and try to make it up over, you know, we're, we're to be stewards of all these things in our life. We have got to not avoid the subject that our finances need to get in order. We've got to decide to get this going in the right direction to begin with. Some people, very few people are like this, but there's a small amount that have no income. Otherwise, if you've got any income, you're starting to say, okay, how can I make sure I'm honoring God first? Here's another thing that people will say when I talk about something like this. Well, pastor just wants to get rich. And I know why you'd say that, because you've seen some wonky stuff over the years with pastors. I get it. You know, I, I understand why you'd say that. So then what you have to do, though, is make a judgment on my life and my work here at this church. I think that... Uh, if you imagine that I'm doing this so that I could get rich, well, you're trying to think that you know my mind, and so you're imagining what I'm thinking is, is a little weird already for you, but it would be right for you to judge me based on the fruits of the work and the sacrifices that my family and I have made for all of these years at our, at our church. In 14 years, Sean and I, the radical change that we've put into our lives to launch this church, get it off the ground, and to be where we are today, if you think that we did it so that we could make money, you, you, you don't know me. You don't know me at all. I'll tell you straight up right now, just over 14 years, we've bought a total of two cars in 14 years, my wife and I. Uh, my wife got a minivan eight years ago. Isn't that a prize? And she's still driving it today. I got, uh, after my car 
smoked on the way to the dealership. I got a new car five years ago. That's it, folks. I live in the same house that I lived in before our church ever started. We're still there. It's not about anything, for, and it's dilapidated. <laughs> some of you have been there, you know. Like, there's some things, you know, I've got, got to work on to get some things fixed. It's not about me making money. And so if you think that, I get it, but you need to get your head straight on this and to see that my wife and our family have cared deeply about getting the gospel to people all over our community. When you decide to partner with us, you'll have that same heart. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave. You serve a God who is a giver, and he gave the ultimate price, his one and only son, Jesus Christ, who was beaten and bludgeoned to death, dripping blood on a cross, a spear shoved into him, hanging on the cross for your sin so that you could be forgiven. That is a high price. And then he says, here's 100% income. Check it out. Just give a tenth back so that we can see more people know about Jesus. Just give a tenth back so we can see more people in your community know about Jesus Christ, partnering with the church. We did a thing a couple weeks ago. We said, hey, why don't you take the tithe challenge? If you don't trust me, I get it. Okay, you don't trust me. Uh, you're, you're not sure about this. Uh, God says, I'll tell you what, uh, do this and you will know that I am real. He actually says, this is the only time in the scriptures he says, give and, and trust God financially and you will see that I am real. And what he says is that set that tenth aside and then you will know. And so we did a little challenge. It said, if you want to try this for 90 days, here's what we'll do. Give, have the first taken out so you don't even see it. Just do the automated thing. All right. And then live, live, give and or give, save, live off the rest, do that thing, try it for 90 days. If you don't sense that God has blessed you, provided a home, provided a roof, provided a bed, provided food, being able to partner with the local church, if after 90 days you try this, you don't see that God is legit, real, and his promises are real, you don't believe it, we'll give you money. We got a money back guarantee. Just come back, see us here at the church, we'll stroke you a check for all your money back. And we'll do that and put it on the line, put our money where our mouth is, because we know that God's promises are real. You can tell us you're taking the tithe challenge on the back of your Connect card. You can write tithe challenge, drop it in the bucket on the way out. If you're watching online, you can let us know by filling out the Connect card, telling us you want to take the tithe challenge. I'll get some information out to you this week to help you know some things you need to pay attention to when it comes to the tithe challenge to help you get through that journey. The other thing we've been doing to get people on board is to for sure be a part of our systematic online giving. And uh, I am so excited to say to you, I'm thankful that just since we did this two weeks ago now, 126 new households have signed up uh, to be givers through the all-in campaign of systematic giving online. So thank you. Thank you, those of you that were already doing it. Thank you to those already doing it online. Thank you to those who are now signed up. I was told that already 55 people have made their first gift uh, as well, and so thank you for that. It also tells me that 60 people haven't made their first gift, a little over 60, so don't I know nobody would do this at New Walk, take the gifts and actually not give. That would be really weird, right? So make sure, you know, you follow through with your commitment. But just as a last chance here, I was last week I'm going to do this, but to incent you, maybe you've been on the fence, you got a card when you came in, you're watching online, you can get one of these filled out as well. You want to take the all-in challenge, you, we've got a gift for you. And it looks like this. We, you can go to the Connect table on your way out on the left-hand side. If you'll sign up for all-in systematic online giving, we will give you a free mug, New Walk mug, and a free hat there. Just take that card, go to the Connect table on your way out, and they'll make sure you get connected. You're watching online. We, you can come by this week here at the church. We'll make sure we get those gifts in your hands as well. You're already doing this. You can go see them as well. We want to get that gift in your hands if you're already doing it. All in is just saying, hey, it's systematic giving. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support and connect to my local church. The best way I can explain this to you, how important it is to, to do this, is I got a little shopping cart here backstage. I'm going to have them come out and just uh, share this with you here. This is a nice Publix shopping cart here. And, uh, and Emily is in the cart to represent to you the difference from being involved in, in giving to your local church and not. When you come to our church and you're not partnering up with us in giving, not only the blessings, not only is it a struggle, but 
The other issue is that what's happening is, is like we're, we're carrying you as a believer. We're pushing you around, you know, we're moving you around. But when you decide to join and partner with the church, you're saying, you know what, I, I, don't, need, I, I don't need you to carry me around. I, I'm going to get involved in moving the cart as well. You get out of the cart and you start helping us push this cart through our community. In other words, reaching people. It's the difference between being a consumer and a contributor. Say, I'm going to get out and help. And when you don't partner with us in giving and, and you're a believer in Christ, what you're saying is, I'm coming to church to be a consumer, you know, push me around, push me around. But when you decide to partner with us in giving, you're getting out of the cart. Come on, Emily, you get out of the cart now, all right? And you're saying, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to help you all push. I'm going to help you all move this cart through our community to keep reaching more and more people. I'm not going to put this off on everybody else. Sometimes people will say, well, you know, that church has probably got a lot of rich givers, a lot of wealthy people. Newsflash, we don't. Uh, if we have wealthy pe- people in the church, could, could you come introduce yourself to me later? I'd love to. Our church has been built on blue-collar hardworking people, whatever you want to call it, everyday people where God's doing extraordinary things through them. It's always been that way. But don't put this off on somebody else. Get out of the cart and start partnering with us to reach this community. Uh, We've been showing you these videos. I have one last video to show you uh, from the LeBrons. Watch this. I'm Max. I'm Chastity. And we're the LeBrons. I found New Walk in 2011 through a relationship I was in at the time. I found New Walk by friends coming here and I started, I was looking for a church to go to that my son would like. So did you guys meet here? Yes. Yes, we were set up on a blind date. (laughs) (laughs) Through mutual friends. It was arranged marriage. (laughs) They still exist. I think giving is important for a few different reasons. First and foremost, we're called to through the Bible. It tells us to give, and if we don't listen to that part of the Bible, how can we be expected to listen to anything else? But also through seeing people's lives change, and that doesn't happen without the finances that go in to funding a church. I think it's important to give because the Bible calls us to give, and then on top of it, we get to see so much life change through all the ministries that this church offers, and all the change that it does in the community. Also met Chastity through this church, and this church doesn't run without giving. But the most important thing is seeing salvations, seeing countless salvations over the nine years I've been here, and that's the biggest thing. We're both always on board for giving. He used to like to give by going to the bank and pulling out cash um, and sticking it in the envelope. So that was a big change for us <laughs> because I was like, no, we, we can do the automated. That way we don't have to drive all the way to the bank because we got a credit union. So it's not like just going to any bank. We'd always have to drive to the bank first, get the money out and put it in the envelope. So I think definitely being able to give automatically is way better. And then it comes out first too. Following the first. I'd say to try it. I mean, that's the first thing is to try it. Set a certain amount of time, six months, three months, whatever. Step out of your comfort zone and at least try it and see from there that as you do that, God will reward your giving and make a way, even if you think it's not financially possible, if you think there's things you've got to cut out of the budget or you don't see how it's going to work, God's still going to reward that. So I'd say if you're skeptical, just try it, set a timeline and try that first and then evaluate there. If you feel God hasn't met your expectations, then reevaluate. But you might be surprised to see that he has. To those of you who are already giving, I'd just like to say thank you for your faithfulness and I just ask that you continue to give. It's so exciting to see all the lives that are changed in our community and that doesn't happen without the generosity of the church. I'm Max. I'm Chastity. And we're the LeBrons. <laughs> Thank you to the LeBrons and their story sharing with us. 
This next one I want to give you is, again, before we're actually working out a full budget, I just believe you should also decide that you're going to save as well. And so this is the next thing I put in your notes, save for the future. You want to be a giver, you want to be a saver. And uh, this is what the Scriptures say from Solomon, Proverbs 21, verse 20, the wise man saves for the future. Uh, people from the Japanese culture, Japanese people, they, they save something like 25% of their income every year. Uh, people that are European, something uh, under 18% now, somewhere in there. Americans are now under 5% of their income. We've not become a saving people. We've become the opposite. We've become a spending people. Proverbs 13 and 11, he grows rich who accumulates little by little that I'm accumulating as I go. Solomon also talks in the scriptures about the ant because even the ant has figured out that he needs to gather in the summer for the winter. He needs to get ready for the, for the winter months. And if the ant can figure this out, you and I can figure this out as well. American Demographic Magazine that talks about uh, finances related to demographics as well uh, said this though, that, that in the coming generations, uh, we've got generations of people coming up that are saving less and less, and it's going to be, it, it, it's already happening so much that we're seeing even people that are moving into retirement now struggling mightily, all right? So like, say East Pasco, uh, and many of you know this, it's been a retirement haven for a lot of people. Uh, people have retired here. Uh, we have northerners as well, right? They come down from the north, and they, they come here during the winter months. We have some of those that are part of our church as well. And what uh, the demographic studies are telling us is that there's a generation of people who are going to retire, and they're not going to have, the, it's going to change East Pasco because they're not going to have the resources to have a second home in Florida because they didn't have a savings. Generations before them did. They saved and they got ready for retirement so much so that they would have a second home maybe even in Florida. But the coming generations aren't going to be able to do that any longer because they're living been living all their life, paycheck to paycheck, and seniors are going to have to be working. They're going to have to work more because they don't have any money to retire. And the generations under that getting worse and worse. We have to decide, if we're going to get our finances in order, that we want to be savers. Instead, we're people watchers, and we watch people at the office, and watch people in our neighborhood, and watch people at the malls, and we watch our friends, and as they acquire stuff, we say, I need to acquire what they have, and we stop saving. Here's the fourth thing in your notes. You're going to plan your spending. This is the budgeting piece that I've referenced. Now, I need to plan you know, what, what, where the money's going to go from here. You know, After I decide to save, after I decide to give, this is what Proverbs 21 and 5 says, I love this translation, it says, plan carefully and you will have plenty, but if you act too quickly, you will never have enough. I hope you'll hear what I'm about to tell you. Here's this. Financial freedom is not found in how much money you make or making more. Financial freedom is found in making the most of what it is you already have and handling the spending of what you already have. You can find financial freedom no matter where you are on the income scale as long as you have learned how to manage your resources. The average American spends six hours a week in shopping-related activities, whether looking online at deals or going to the store and getting them. Studies show that the more educated you are, the more shopping time you spend uh, throughout the week. Uh, another study says that nine out of ten people, when they shop, they shop impulsively based on commercials, emotional appeals. You better get it. It's on sale now, but you better get it while supply lasts. Costophobia. This leads people to say, like, maybe my wife might say this. Hey, Gary, I got all of this stuff on sale. Look how much we saved. <laughs> that may be true if it was in your budget. But if it wasn't in your budget, it doesn't matter how on sale it is. It's setting you out to be more than what you should be spending. Proverbs 21 and verse 20. Stupid people spend their money as fast as they get it. That's nobody in here. 
Nobody at New Walk, you know, but I'm just saying, like, you know, we say, look, man, we, we don't want to be people that do this. Uh, there, over the years, there's been all kinds of, you know, things like Debtors Anonymous and support groups for people that are having problem getting their finances under control. They used to say, you know, here's how you stop impulse buying. Ready? Take all your credit cards, put them in a bucket of water, and freeze them in the freezer. And then when you're thought that you want to buy something on impulse, well, you got to wait for it to thaw out first before you can get your credit card. And so they would say that's a really good way to keep from impulse buying. The truth is now, though, electronically, they already store our information on our phone or our computer, and all we got to do, it's already there. Just hit send. It's even easier now than ever before to fall prey to impulse giving. How do you stop impulse, or sorry, impulse buying? How do you stop impulse buying dead in its tracks? It's a six-letter word, B-U-D-G-E-T. Budgeting is telling your money where you want it to go rather than wondering where it went. We have something we offer people here at our church. It's called Financial Peace University. FPU, we call it, Financial Peace University. We've already had, I've talked about this the last couple of weeks, we've already had more and more people say, I'm interested, I'm interested. What, I want to know more about Financial Peace University. It's in January. Maybe you'd say, like, right now, i got to get some things in order in January. I want to know about this group. I want to be a part of it. If you're interested in Financial Peace University, a group we have here during the week at church, uh, you can write FPU on the back of your Connect card. Drop it in the bucket on your way out, or uh, you can, if you're watching online, you can tell us that you're interested in FPU as well through the, uh, the link tree, uh, through your Connect card. You can say, I'm interested in FPU. Just tell us that, and uh, we'll get you information in the coming week or two about that event that's happening in January. They shared with me, FPU, the guys that are doing this here at our church, they shared with me three interesting stats uh, that I want to share with you. They've done three rounds of Financial Peace University already here at our church. And over those three rounds, $250,000 in non-mortgage debt has been paid off. 100 credit cards have been destroyed. And $50,000 has been put in savings accounts. Wow. Yeah, I hope you maybe say, I want to be a part of something like that. That's FPU, Financial Peace University. Here's the last thing. It's pretty simple, but it's so big. Enjoy what you already have. This is the principle of contentment. That it's not about what I don't have and what I want in the future. It's what God has already blessed me with now. And there's too many people running around, even Christians, who are not content with the good things they already have. Proverbs 21, verse 17, indulging in luxuries, wine, and rich food will never make you wealthy. This is something that's ignored all across East Pasco. Indulging, indulging, and hoping that it will make me happy, looking for pleasures, you know, lo looking, for, lo looking for more possessions, hoping that people will like me, uh, more things, more, uh, buying more stuff to impress and it's ruining our homes. It's ruining our families. The thought that having more will make me happy. Listen, you are trained. Uh, studies tell us that with something like 350,000 advertisements, commercials, blasts on your, uh, on your feed that you're reading, 350,000 advertisements by the time you graduate from high school that have told you if you want to be happy, you need to get this, get this, get this. No wonder when we get out of our parents' homes, we start going crazy looking for more and more things to make us happy. It's been ingrained in us since we were young. Guys, this mentality is destroying us. It reminds me of the time where the father wanted a family portrait of all the family before his kid went off to college. It was his last time to get a family portrait before the kid went off to college, the boy. And so they got to the front of the, the photographer, and the photographer said, let's arrange this to make it look best. And then he said, now, now uh, Father, why don't you have your son put his arm rested on your shoulder? That'll make for a really nice part of the family portrait. And the father said, well, if you want to really be accurate about it, his hand should be in my pocket because he was always going for my wallet throughout all of his time here in the home. It's sort of like, yeah, like we're just trained, uh, you know, all our years. we got to have more. Give me more. How can I have more? Fill in the blank on this. Ready? I will be happy when I have blank. If it's not of God, I promise you, 
it won't happen. You'll think it will, but it's not going to. Hebrews 13 and verse 5, be content with what you have. Sometimes people think contentment is complacency. Well, contentment just means just sit back and do nothing. That's complacency. God does not call us into complacency. When God puts something in your heart, a dream, a vision in your heart, He don't want you to be complacent. Contentment is saying, I can enjoy the things that God has already put around me in my life. But here's, here's New Walk Church, wack a doodle doo behavior. You ready? Here it is. We got to get a bunch of stuff, but in now in order to pay for it, I've got to work extra, she's got to work a job, I've got to work a second job, she's got to work a second job so that we can pay for all this stuff, and then we come home at the end of the day and we're irritable and we're exhausted and we're snapping at one another, we don't have any time for one another, and then, oh, by the way, our kids are craving us, but we can't be there. We got a nice home, but we don't have a home. And this is all a portrait of not being able to be content with what it is that we have. If you say these words, I know we're hustling right now, but it's only temporary, the wool has been pulled over your eyes. It won't be temporary. Uh, You've got to deal with this lack of contentment. I wrote this down in my notes. No matter how much money you make, your yearnings will always exceed your earnings, and so you have to be able to deal with with that, you've got to develop a lifestyle that causes you to be content with the things that you already have in place in your life. I would tell you, there's some things I've shared with you today. You'd say, Gary, I can't afford to do some of those things. I I want to tell you, you can't afford not to do these things I've shared with you. You have got to decide to get this financial stuff in order. Isaiah 55 in verse 2 says this, why spend money on what doesn't satisfy. Love how that translation puts that. Uh, in other words, we're buying these things that, that don't satisfy us. And here's our problem. When we're buying things, things don't change. Things are static. Did you know Like You get a car, and it's a nice change in the moment because it's a new car, but the car doesn't change, right? It's still the same for the next five years, six years. And we get bored with that. We're like, I, I'm kind of bored with this. You know, it didn't change. And we acquire a new television, and it's nice in the moment, but it doesn't really change. It's just the same TV for five, and we get bored with it because things don't change really. You know, we can tweak something here and add an accessory there, but in the end, the phone doesn't change, right? It's still the same phone, and so we get bored with the fact that it didn't change, and so now I need something else to make a change. That's what's happening. But Jesus understood this this issue, and here's what he says in the Sermon on the Mount. Here's what he says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be what? Filled. God made you for a purpose. He did not make you by accident. You are not here to to live a life that, that doesn't matter. When you come to know Jesus Christ, you come to know the life that God wants for you. And I am here to tell you, when you wake up every morning craving that life, that's what Jesus is saying, that I will be filled. When I wake up every morning craving what God wants for me in my life, it's not static. It changes in my life because God is working in me and he's doing new things in my life every day. It's dynamic. God is unchanging, but the work he's doing inside of me is constantly moving and shaking. The work he wants for me and my wife, my marriage, my family, my kids, people around me, it's constantly developing and it is exciting. And when I have that in my life, I don't need the things. I just want the excitement of what God has for me in my life. Some of you are believers in Christ and you need to get back into understanding that if you will seek the things of God, you will be filled. Look, the truth is some of you are in hock right now, like financially, you're a mess. And you need a financial manager. FPU kind of helps you with that, but you need a financial manager. But there are some of you watching online and here in our live setting, you need something even more than a financial manager, you need a life manager because your life is a mess. And I want to say to you, the Bible has a word for a life manager, and here's that word. Ready? It's called Lord. You need a Lord of your life to guide you into right, healthy living. And so I want to invite some of you, as I close out this financial series, and some of you to say, okay, I want to get my financial house in order, but there are some of you that need to get your life house in order. 
inviting Jesus Christ into your life to be Lord of your life, to guide you in marriage, in family, in relationships, friendships, your recreational life, your social life, and all these other things. We seek God first, and we are filled that way. Let's pray together. God, for those watching online here in our live setting, God, I pray that there maybe if there's a, a believer who's got to just get refocused, God, that you would do a work in them, that there would be commitments made to get financial houses in order. God, we thank you for the word you've given us through Solomon, God, but I know there's somebody watching online here live that needs a life manager and they have rejected that in their life, but they've come to a place where they're ready to get their life in order and it starts by inviting the gift of Jesus Christ into our lives, inviting him in and saying yes to the heavenly father through the gift of Jesus. God sent, you sent your son Jesus as a sacrifice for the times we got our life out of order. Yeah, you sent your son Jesus to get our priorities right, our heart right, our worship right. Yeah, you sent your son Jesus so that we could have eternal life. So if that is you here today and you've never made that decision, would you just invite him in? That's just, it's a surrender. It's saying, God, I'm making you Lord of my life. I accept the gift of Jesus today. I believe that he died on the cross and rose from the dead for my sin, for my forgiveness so that I could be freed, have new life, a dynamic life, eternal life. I receive that today in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for watching online. Thank you for being here in our live setting. I hope you'll be with us next week as we kick off our new series. I'm going to hand things over to Gavin and Eddie. Thank, thank you, you so Pastor much. Gary. Hey, could you give up Pastor Gary and tell all the cool things God is doing? Yeah. It's been a great weekend, and we have a few things to talk about before you guys leave in just a moment. Eddie, what do we got going on? One of them is a reminder about the all-in giving Pastor Gary just talked about during the message. If you wanted to get that card turned in, you can take it right to the Connect Area desk. Or if you have any questions, they'd be happy to help you out with that. But you only have two weeks left to get that turned in in order to get in on those free gifts that he talked about. So take advantage of that. Right. And I think, you know, the, the free gifts are awesome. But once again, I'm going to touch on this fresh merch. Listen, when you guys walk out, it's right over there to your right. I believe our friend Emily Gray will be working there. So make sure you give her a visit and check out some of the stuff we got going on over there. Right. Another thing you may have noticed when you walked through the doors uh, this morning is that stack of boxes along the wall. It actually, the, box, the stack got pretty small by this service because a lot of people were taking them. Those are boxes of hope. It's our way of giving back this, this holiday season. It's an empty box with a list inside that has some dry goods that you can pick up at the store. Fill that box with those dry goods and get it back here. We'll make sure they get to the, the hands of the families and the homes that need them this Christmas season. And there's only, I think, about 18 boxes left. So let's not leave today with that, without that stack being gone. Make sure you take one with you. If you want more, we can possibly even get some more. But let's make sure that stack is gone and homes are fed. Yeah, and I speak on behalf of many. Metropolitan Ministries, for those of you who don't know, is an amazing ministry. So we are super excited to be partnering with them this season. And also, we want to talk about prayer while we're up here. Prayer, obviously, for us as a congregation and as a church is very important. And so for that reason, we want to make it as convenient as possible for those of you who need prayer, which we all do, to receive prayer from us. And so one of the first ways you can receive prayer from us is through your Connect card. And when you write on those Connect cards, whatever it is, we have a team in the back that prays over them. They're doing it right now. And it's really cool to witness them praying over those cards. But it's even cooler to see how God works through those in every season of life. And the next way is to text the number. It's a 24-7 hotline number. You can text it whenever, for whatever, and it is a super easy way to receive prayer. And the last way is right up here. We'll have a team ready to receive you when we dismiss in just a moment. And last but certainly not least is we're going to talk about giving. Obviously, giving is important. We've done been talking about that over the uh, past few weeks, and so we make that convenient as well. So there are a few different ways you can give digitally um, or here in person, so make sure you take advantage of that as well. Just want to make things as convenient as possible for you guys. And so we're going to pray for that offering in tithes, so if you would all pray your head, or bow your heads and pray with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, we thank you for this weekend, and we thank you for the wisdom and the experiences that you have uh, given to Pastor Gary so that we can receive this message um, and learn from your word how it looks to be fruitful givers, God. And I pray that you take these tithes and offerings this week, help it to spread throughout our community, throughout our world, God, and to help the world get a little closer to you. And we pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. New walk, that's all we have for you guys. You guys have a fantastic week. We'll see you around. Adios.